Hello viewers, Super GT here, thank you for joining me. So we have a couple of races here around Interlagos in Brazil. Now this was um, this was a daily race or weekly race from a previous bygone week, but um, you know why not bring it out? Who cares that it was last week? The racing is all that matters. Let's see how it goes. As we we start eighth. Now this this combination had had some different cars coming to the coming to the fore. The Mustang seemed to be good. The Ford GT is good. The Volkswagen you see ahead of us there that was also really good. But it's also the Atenza which I'm driving, which seemed to catch the imagination of many a player in in this specific event. But this. This is where things began to go downhill very quickly. Now this is our Rama analysis. As um, and in many ways it was a weird type of ramming. Um, it was very subtle, but it did make a difference. And I wasn't having any of it. So get back out there, mate. And I'm taking my eighth place back. Thank you very much. And I was amazed that he held that slide, but then I realised he's got counter steer assist on oh boy oh boy this is this is what we're up against here so uh, coming down towards the final couple of corners on the circuit and many many of you will be happy to see the return of the angry gt there taking revenge not standing for any of the crap that was going to happen but when i mention crap that's going to happen well look at this because Bit of an incident there, Polish guy goes wide, and then this guy <laughs> jumping across the grass, all happy, and eventually comes back on, almost pulls off a total 90, and yes, I'm into the back of him. Gets a penalty as well, nice five second penalty, and officially, my race was dead from this point here, as I go sliding into the wall and receive a penalty. Unfortunate events, on, yeah. Not going very well for us. This is the view from our friend who had a nice nibble at us earlier. So there's me slamming into the wall, into the German as well. Not good. So this guy's gone from side ninth, he's up to seventh now, courtesy of those two positions, of course. Let's analyse or let's have a look at um, this guy's race because I was very curious. You'll see his result at the end, and I was like, how, how has he done that? Well, let's, let's have a look. So step one, of course, use counter steer assist. But um, the, the main thing I was kind of looking at here was sort of the intricate nature of the ramming. It wasn't full blown smash him off the track ramming. It was just like, you see here, just like tiny little taps, just pushing him wide. That one was a bit more blatant. It's kind of the same. And look at the mob. The angry mob is following him now. They're gonna hunt him down and get that justice they deserve like some injury claim advert but um but yeah there is that kind of intricate ramming where you just edge people wide a slight a slight amount it's not much but it is enough to get through and it's kind of dirty but intricate dirty and uh, this is me about five miles further back um, fighting back in 13th i've got most of my penalty down so i've served most of that but not quite all of it and up into 12 as we just sweep ahead he almost comes back for a bit a bit more um, but back with our friend here this is lap number three now so he's in fifth a meteoric rise albeit with contact so he's hunting down a couple of guys as we skip towards the end of lap three now so it's a five lap race here at Interlagos lasts about uh, eight or so minutes so going around the main straight so he's definitely in the slipstream now. Nissan GTR there in third, doing well in that car. Uh, hunted down by the, uh, the Volkswagen of Vigil and Lewis. Coming into turn one then, let's see, uh, let's see what happens here. So they're going side by side just up ahead. He kind of has to back out slightly as they continue through turn two through the center S. As we come down towards his favorite corner, he loves going for a little lunge down at turn four down the hill, is he going to go through it this time, tucks back into the slipstream slightly, he's thinking about it, and there it is, not quite, no, but as we go in, he goes a little bit wide, does uh, Lewis, and he comes out for a little bit of a hit on the way through, not the cleanest move, but it wasn't quite as bad as the other ones, so he's actually got his way up to fourth now, 
up behind the Irishman, Frankie Boy 333, who's sliding his way through the turn in his uh, Nissan GTR. You can just see the Nissan GTR being used. Um, I used that car a lot in FIA seasons earlier this year, but I haven't really seen it being used all that much recently. It's good to see it actually put to, put to some good use here. So coming down towards is that Glock turn. The final corner of turn 12, I think, or turn 13 here at Interlagos in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The circuit nestling in between the city, like right between a couple of lakes, Interlagos, like Lagos meaning, meaning lakes. Between the lakes, essentially, is, is the meaning of the name. And as we come down the main straight, let's see how this one pans out. The Nissan not taking a defensive line, although the Mustang now very quickly gaining. Is he going to go for the move? He thinks about it, he does eventually go for it. A bit of contact, but I think the Nissan is going to uh, keep ahead as we go through the centre S, almost out of control. Counter steer assist there comes to the rescue as we sweep down, down the back straight and towards. The, fate, the fateful corner for this guy. He's quite a long way back, but that's that's no obstacle. You're going to go for the lunge, up the inside, pushing him wide. And again, for good measure, pushing him wide on the exit. He is not happy. He is flashing those headlights. That is um, a signal of disgust from the Nissan GTR driver. Absolutely not happy. On board with uh, Lewis now in the, in the Volkswagen. Is he going to be able to seek the justice? that the entire pack here deserves against the ramming Brit. So he has a nibble at him, pushing him a little bit wide, and the Mustang fights back and almost slams uh, Lewis into the wall. Or, or it was a weird kind of a, a, a return push, if you like. But I think um, Jazz is going to come through here. This is coming uh, come up towards the final turn of the race, of the lap and the race. He's going to get the job done here, I think. As Lewis just gets a bit of a slide on the exit. And Jazz there has come through from ninth up to third with a bit of luck because, of course, you know, I was involved in that incident. That's two positions for free, but then just intricate, intricate um, little, bit, little, little pushes. And it's something that um, the penalty system can't seem to pick up. If you just edge people wide a little bit, then uh, you can kind of get away with it sometimes, or quite a lot of times. And obviously, he's quite, he's quite um, proficient at doing it without getting a penalty. Um, so I eventually caught up with the pack. It was a really, to uh, really tight pack there, as you can see up ahead. But um, getting a 32 0, good lap time, but not good enough overall. And actually, turns out I had a one second penalty. I'd, I, I did got, obviously, I got that penalty at the end. Um, and he didn't get a penalty. <laughs> that guy was just pushing everyone wide. Not a single penalty at all. And uh, I, can only, I can only regret that he did slide a little bit wider there and uh, get sent to the realm of shadows. But um, we're going to progress on to another race, starting fourth this time. Let's see if we can have a nicer, a cleaner race and perhaps uh, make up some positions. I think that's always the aim for me. Um, from wherever you start, try to go forwards, try to gain positions. Uh, you know, if you stay where you are, that's kind of okay. If you lose, out, if you lose positions, then uh, that's not good. You want to you gain positions and it looks like we're going to do that already. So it's Lewis there once again. He was in that last race. And we've got Frankie Boy here. Once again, also in a second, he's gone for the Atenza this time, though. The Atenza seemed to be a really good car for this uh, track. It's not always been a great car, but all of a sudden it seemed to it seemed to do very well, and it was dominating the leaderboards at one point. Although it did have a fair mix around this track, actually, you can see the four GT up there in, in first position. So there was, a, there was a good three, four, maybe five cars that you could use around here and be uh, competitive. And um, actually, out of nowhere, Mikhail Hazal, so TRL Lightning, just setting a ridiculous lap time in the Audi R8. So he got a 130.5 in the Audi R8, which is absolutely crazy pace, which is, uh, you know, about 1.3 seconds quicker than I could manage. So I'm, you know, I'm a long way off. And uh, it's just a scintillating lap, really. At this point here, end of lap one, just tucking into the slipstream now of the two guys ahead, which is good news. You, you really do need that toe down the straight. If you're not in that toe, you lose a couple of attempts, or you, you gain a couple of attempts by being in the, in the in the toe, should I say. And in turn, I am towing along Lewis, I think, just about. Crossing the line, beginning of lap two, into turn one. 
breaking about 75 meters before the corner and we've hooked up with that apex nicely and through center rest we've got through here okay as well Frankie Boyd is having some difficulty controlling the back end of that car the Atenza I think that is the key weakness of the car it is rather slidey uh, coming out of slow corners so you do definitely have to watch out for that you do have to have your throttle modulation up to scratch so Frankie a little bit wide just dips two wheels almost, almost gets sucked off are we going to be able to displace him up into second as we've got the hill yes he backs out probably quite a sensible move and we're up into second position is the win possible here full gt is really good in a straight line but it doesn't have the best brakes that is the key weakness of that car and it's always it's always important to to understand or know the strengths and the weaknesses of your opponent's cars and perhaps of the way they drive but mainly of the cars so i know that if we're sort of side by side going into a corner i should have the advantage because of the better braking of this car this car's got really good brakes and the ford has got quite bad brakes um, as far as group three goes uh, but i don't think i'm going to be anywhere close enough going to turn one this time in fact i've had quite a poor exit out of the final turn onto the onto the straight and he is pulling away the ford gt really good in a straight line the attends are not too bad but the ford Class leading straight line speed. What's the line? 32.2, good lap time. Lewis with a 32.1, so he's actually the fastest person on the circuit on that lap. And we actually come under assault. I think Lewis there with um, a bit of a late move into turn one. We actually bail across the Astro turf, which you can kind of get away with. It looks like you're cutting the track, which obviously you are. But if you're pushed into it, the game kind of lets you do it. As we come into the final turn, then lap number four, are we within? slipstream range this this race was really nip and tuck it's one of those ones where you're kind of hovering on the edge of the suck zone the suck zone being about seven six or six or seven temps and i was on about eight or nine temps for the most of the race so i was just never quite close enough but you know that's the great challenge when a race is so close that you know temps matter and you really do have to nail every corner if you get one corner a little bit wrong lose a temp you might lose the race as a result because you're not going to be in the slipstream but it's always good to be challenged in that kind of way going through the final turn and we've got a lot closer this time about six temps although again getting a poor exit we were close enough maybe one more lap and we might have been able to get you know a bit closer and perhaps go for a move but unfortunately that isn't the case only five laps we're going to come across the line to finish second not a bad result though again and we want to go forwards and we did that we started fourth finished second uh, less than a second off of the lead and there are the results, actually getting a 31.8 on the final lap, so a good lap time there, which actually matches my qualifying time. So to be able to do it in a race is always good, albeit with um, um, some slipstream assist, which does help, of course. We go again, we go again, starting in uh, seventh this time. So the Italian getting uh, shoved out there by Johnny Bravo Ki uh, Chris, I was about to say Kiss. Um, so the two, the two Italians there going hammer and song, one getting a penalty, one losing a chunk of time and positions. That is, um, oh god, someone almost sliding into the back of me. I think I just escaped with my life by bare millimetres. Up behind Spanish Rambo here, up the hill. He's got the inside line, of course. And he's taking it quite slow. He's giving me the room. I'm going to take that invitation. Let's go around the outside, go quite deep here, give him the inside line. But I should have the inside line for the left, which is coming up. There it is and eventually get the job done up into fifth gaining two positions on this lap so just kind of waiting there for the corner to come into my favor and he's gone back up the inside it's not the best move i'm forced wide onto the grass and the italian is going to retake that position and the spaniard actually to be fair to him he's just going to pull over to the side let me go back through i'm under assault from a czech player now tom host so i'm back into seven i'm back to where i started back to square one after such a good promising start uh, we've lost out but that's the, that's the problem with that turn it kind of opens up you take the racing line people take that as the invitation got the inside and it often doesn't always work out there so just trying to undercut this guy you can see here getting um, a wider line into this turn not quite there though so we back out he's gone a little bit deep can we return to go around his outside here no he's edged me wide i'm going to go uh, go for a cut back on him and scare him into a move here he goes defensive i'm not going to go for the move there it's not normally the best place I would say at this point on the track here, 
it's often best just to wait until the main straight. So I'm going to get the cut back here. I probably could go for this move, go for the lunge, but no, I'm going to back out, play it sensible, go through the final turn normally, and then just pull off the easier move. This is just by far the easier move to do. Do it on the main straight, where you've got all the slipstream, you've got a long straight, a big breaking zone, and uh, it's much more likely to come off cleanly. So they're top right into that slipstream. The Mustang and the Atenza, I think, fairly well matched around this track, especially in terms of top speed. Are we going to be able to go for the move here? We're very close, not quite alongside. Going to go for the lunge, and we just make contact, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to slow down here and let, let him return into that position. So I just couldn't quite, mis uh, I couldn't quite judge that. I, I misjudged it slightly. Of course, you can't quite see the front end of your car in this chase cam, which is perhaps a key disadvantage of this view can't quite see the front corners of the car. But coming down into turn four, gonna go for the move here. Late on the brakes, he was actually a little bit too early. And we get the move done. Tiny bit of door rubbing, but I think it was all um, well mannered. And we're back up into sixth position and Super TT video confirmed finishing in sixth position. So not too bad a race after some setbacks. But we go again. Once again we go, oh, start, start from sixth this time. So we've got the Italian here in the 4GT, launching an assault into Turn 1. This this race here is really a story of attacks into Turn 1, and we'll see how the next one goes. So that one didn't quite come off. This one went for it from really far back, actually pulled it off quite nicely, but went a little bit too deep, had to back off, and he returns as the Spaniard there actually spins out, and I gain a position. Okay, next time around... So third time lucky maybe, let's see how this one pans out. So we're going to go around the outside this time, as, and again I say the attendant has got much better brakes. And coming down towards the centre S, and oh, it gets a bit messy, and going to get handed a four second penalty, which I, I think was a little harsh, because if you look at this, side by side here, and then as we come down towards the right, yes I've turned in later than he has, but I think he's turned in too early, and he's, he's demanded or he's almost demanded that I kind of disappear or, or, or he was un, unaware that I was actually there because um, I was actually all over the curb there's not much more I could have done but um, ultimately finishing fifth in that one so he still gained I suppose so could be worse and as a result again the penalty you know you get penalties you get handed penalties and your sportsmanship rating drops it's still S but you get matched up with lower ranked players if you're your rating drops a little bit. So this one, starting from pole in the Mustang this time, went for the, the Mustang, which I think is a much easier car to handle. But perhaps is maybe a tenth or two off of the Atenza overall, uh, but, but the car is it's just much easier to handle. So it uh, should hopefully lend itself to making or having a mistake-free race. Now this race was all about the start, just trying to pull away, get the gap, and, uh, and like pretty much instantly, you can see there, 1.5 seconds after about three corners and it turned into a victory our 80 second victory on the game so we're getting closer to schumacher's 91 but we finally get to the final race of the video and uh, we're gonna go for the mustang this time so plenty of races uh, in this video uh, a lot of them were a matter of starting you know around about that fifth to eighth range and just gaining a couple positions each time it's just a shame that i perhaps couldn't qualify a little bit better but no matter how many laps i didn't qualify i just really couldn't beat my lap time of uh, 31 8. Um, i could perhaps do a 31 6 if i really stringed everything together and got it all right but I just wasn't able to quite do it i kept bottling it whenever i'm up on a split and i'm like oh god I'm two times up i'm two times up i could go and do a 31 5 or 31 6 and then I just make a mistake. Uh, but anyway, uh, lap two here. Mustang and the Lexus. So it's good to see a Lexus actually being used. Uh, something different actually. Um, I don't think that's featured thus far in the video. But this is going to be quickly turning into a two horse race here. Or oh, sorry, a three horse race for third place. So come down towards turn four. Mustang in third gone defensive. Is the German going to be able to get the car back? Not quite. Goes it actually into the back of the Belgian. I'm going to look around the outside, he just comes across, I back out, and um, the, the move's not quite going to be on there. So it continues, gone a little bit wide, can we perhaps take advantage and take the inside line? He's gone really wide, he has just kept two wheels on that kerb, which is the track limit. If you keep two wheels on the kerb, even if your other wheels are way beyond it, 
then you won't get penalty. So he knows that he's just kept it in within the limit and and kept the position. So so good driving ultimately there. So looking for a way past, it's, it's backing up now. The the Belgian looks like he's on the back foot. He certainly isn't looking comfortable right now. He's not really totally in control. He is. He's in he's in the prime position of this battle. But he is definitely having to go defensive. As we go down the main straight, let's whip forward down towards the other end of the straight. He's gone certainly very defensive. He knows that the guys behind him are looking for a way past. And the Lexus actually, with a bit of contact, gets through. He's going to resume third place. There he is, yes. Gets the job done. Now it's probably going to be rolls reversed. The Lexus is going to have to move to the left-hand side here. Yes, he is. Cover off the move from the Mustang. So three of us going way to the inside. I'm going to move out to the racing line. Perhaps go for the cutback on the way out of the turn. Get the better drive. Now this corner here favours me. As we go up the hill, up towards a right-hander, he's now going to have the inside line. And of course, I have to kind of concede this one. And if I can go for a cutback here, it's not quite going to happen. I can see the shadow just appearing on the bottom right of the screen. Meaning that we have someone else uh, joining the battle. Player 3 has joined the battle. A little bit wide, and that's the thing you need to do when someone's on the inside, just drive a bit wider because I knew that the next turn is a left hander, I needed to be on the left ultimately, so he can have the right for the right hander. But then, as long as I have the left and the inside for the next turn, I was always going to keep that position. So, keeping fifth for now, albeit now this um, position got a little bit harder to keep as we have a challenger from behind. So, now it's three way battle for fourth rather than three way battle for third. So I think the German there had a good lap as a result really of us fighting over this position. And look at this, up the inside, absolutely beautiful move, textbook stuff. You're going to see that in racing textbooks in years to come as an example of how to go for a mega lunge. It's absolutely beautiful and, and we've pulled it off to perfection, up into fourth, uh, got the job done nicely. Looking behind, is he going to be able to go for that move? I decide no, take the normal racing line. It turns out to be the correct decision, so we'll get through there okay. But now he's definitely going to be uh, putting us under pressure. He's only two temps behind, and uh, at the end of the lap here, four temps behind, or three temps behind, coming up towards the final turn. We're actually, half a second up on our previous best, which is 32.9 at this point here, which isn't too good. We have been fighting though, so it's not always about lap time. Uh, sometimes you're always going to be fighting, so we're going to try and get that better, uh, better position. Just really trying to minimise his slipstream by taking a wider line through there, moving over to the left-hand side to go defensive, and then I decide that he's not quite close enough, although I think he actually is. It might not have been the right decision. And we go a little bit deep, so I defended there by breaking later, which made it harder for him to go for the out-breaking manoeuvre. And yes, he did, go, he did get quite close, but I think it was ultimately the right decision. Moving over to the left-hand side of the track here, Again, to go defensive. This race is very much turned into a defensive race. Third place is uh, 1.6 seconds ahead. I'm not going to gain that in one lap. So it's really about keeping what you've got at this point here. Mustang uh, doing a good job here of being uh, you know, a nice, solid, stable car to drive. And not too much in the way of drama with this car. And uh, sometimes that's the better thing, even if it isn't as fast. It minimises your mistakes, which is uh, just as crucial in racing. So through the infield section, but I'd rather compose through here, and we're just hoping to pull away because there's still a threat that the driver behind can kind of slipstream you across the line. Um, obviously, this is the final lap, so it's not going to be able to overtake me to turn one because the race is going to end before we get there. But he can still slipstream me and possibly pass on the line or before the line. So coming out the final turn, and that's been a key weakness of mine, I think I've noticed from this video. In fact, I've gone a little bit slow out of that turn. We have to go mega defensive here. I'm going to make sure he goes to the right-hand side, which is the longer way around. He's definitely in that slipstream. He's getting sucked along hard. As we come up to the line, it's a super close finish. 0.015. That is the di that's the difference between us as we cross. Really close. Ultimately, keeping fourth in a, in a good race. A bit of attacking and then a bit of defending and I certainly enjoyed that one. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts, and uh, well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for making it this far into the video. I shall see you next time. Thank you as always. Goodbye.